Hello and welcome to Vintage Story. <laughs> this uh, this has been a huge headache to make. I gotta say, I you know can I can I I never do this, but can can I get you guys to to hit the like button because these Vintage Story videos are honestly becoming a huge problem <laughs> to produce. They're they're so taxing i don't understand it but it takes me sometimes like three hours to edit one of these things and the, you know my my software keeps crashing it's, it sucks anyway we're uh we're doing all kinds of fun stuff today and uh i get to i get to say the words um today i'm building a contraption yo we're building contraptions today and uh, i'm pretty excited about that but i can't uh, i would be remiss if I didn't include some footage of me um, doing stuff with bees, because you know, um, you got them, you want them, you love them, you gotta, you gotta, ha you gotta have them. More bees, more bees all the time. I'll get that beeswax. Um, I noticed metal parts got updated. They they used to be some kind of weird generic gear on a stick, and now it's like a you know some kind of metal parts. Yeah, it looks it looks a bit more distinct. But um, we're getting some fat from raccoons, as we do. And we're actually collecting a lot of fat today. Um, not not necessarily my choice, but, uh, you know, sometimes uh, destiny is kind of thrust upon you uh, in these situations. But I did, I, I spotted myself a fox, and things unravel here. I was very, very proud of this one, like, amazing snipe shot. Um, I didn't kill it with the snipe shot, unfortunately, but I did hurt it quite a bit. And then I noticed there was a wolf behind the fox so i decided you know let's uh let's get the wolf too that seems good you know i've got arrows and uh you know the the bow and arrow was once uh, the greatest um advancement in technology and uh and in warfare that we ever knew so um that's it makes makes things a lot easier when you have a bow and arrow um but i have run through my arrows very rapidly and I see another wolf as I'm collecting one wolf, so, you know, we just let's, let's keep this ball rolling. And I go over here to collect this wolf, and uh, I spot, I spot a something. I think I spot a something after I've collected the fat and the bush meat. Yeah, I spot another wolf and a bear! And let me tell you, there's honestly nothing more terrifying than seeing a bear chase you down. So I decide instead of running, I, I shall I shall fight instead of flight, and uh, I decide to start attacking it. But yeah, that bear absolutely ripped me to pieces. So I come back and I hit it with some more arrows, and I thought maybe it was almost dead because it was running away from me apparently. But nope. Oh, this thing actually has like a, quite a lot of life left to give. So, um, well, two lives, I suppose. And, uh, you know, like, once you're stuck in this loop, you, you gotta go back and recover your arrows. And, uh, if there's a wolf in the way, or two wolves in the way, then, uh, you know, just, you just gotta clear that out. You just gotta clear that, that whole forest of wild creatures out to get that one bear. Because, you know, now that you've started, you, you can't really, you, ha you have to finish it. And I'm looking at my my fresh leather armor, which is no longer fresh. It is in fact a tattered, uh, tattered wreck of of you know clothing. So uh, thank goodness today we are also um, working on improving leather production. Uh, so that'll be something we deal with later. But I got some fat from this wolf, and uh, there is yet another wolf. There's so many wolves in this forest. I don't know. They, they I think they have a population problem. I I didn't really feel too bad about cleaning some of this out because like good lord there must have been at least six to eight wolves in this forest and they were chilling with the bear it's like they had come to some kind of mutual agreement like yeah uh screw that guy you know the guy living in the big hut over there um we're, we're gonna attack him at dawn so um we're just like gonna chill here together and uh yeah anyway so this was that was a nightmare but hey three large pelts I think those are extra large pelts as well, which is kind of cool, but I still died once again to that last wolf. Decided to cut my losses there. I, I recovered some stuff, but not a lot. I uh, lost quite a bit of arrows in that whole mess. Come back and, uh, you know, throw some leather in the in the bin and squeeze some more juice. You know, I gotta include some juice squeezing in these videos if i don't then i you know it's for the fans you know the, the, the vintage story fans they i know what you want and i know you want some some juice squeezing footage so there you go and uh, we're gonna go ahead and throw some more of this 
uh, dry mash in the in the trogs um, and try and feed her chickens and fail because there's yet more creepy crawlies in the darkness. Um, and I made a lot of barrels. This is probably the highest level ratio of barrels per video or session ever. Because I, I went ahead and made a lot of barrels. I wanted to... Because we got like a ton of bush meat, right? A, more than a full stack of bush meat. So I wanted to preserve that. And uh, in order to do that, you gotta, gotta put throw a barrel together, put some salt in that business. And I'm not sure, you know, maybe you can let me know in the comments. Like, you've seen the pile of salt I have. I have a lot of salt. Do you think that if you have, like, a crazy amount of salt, it would be worth, um, you know, uh, preserving it? Preserving bushmeat, I guess? Not preserving salt. Preserving bushmeat. I guess I'm asking, is bushmeat ever at any point worth preserving? Because I know it's not good food. I know it's it's pretty much the bottom of the barrel, no pun intended, uh, food. But at the same time, it's like, you know, you got the salt, you got the, the meat, and you want to do something with it, you know. You could cook it, but then you kind of have a similar situation. Never, it always weirds me out when I see a, a chicken dead in the forest, but I, I know how that happened. We're collecting a lot of resin today, just a lot of resin. Um, resin is our major bottleneck right now in order to build a contraption, and uh, so I went out on several different expeditions. Oh, thank you, phone. I appreciate your input. Didn't really ask for it, but you know, there it is. Um, needed needed a ton of resin. We have the fat, we have the wood, we've got all the tools, we've got the means. We just need the resin. So um, here is my major experimentation today, because I'm gonna I'm gonna pose this to to the comments um you, maybe you, if you know how my windmill works i'm trying to add another windmill this is a new project i want to do the, obviously this windmill is not high enough in order to justify even even aesthetically to justify it um but basically that windmill is directly connected to my major axle and I, what I'd like to do is for it to provide extra torque to my power system. It's going to require more axles, obviously. I want to get it nice and high. And uh, I would like to have, like, another structure building that, uh, you know, kind of extends upwards. It would be uh, slimmer and um, much taller than our main structure, our main windmill structure. So that's um, kind of my thoughts on that. I... I uh, I don't know yet if what I want to do, it might mean um, I have to, instead of like having it directly connected to the axle, instead I have it uh, basically with an angled geared, uh, angled gear attached to the main gear that powers the our main axle. So that would mean I would have to offset it either backwards or forwards. If I have it backwards behind the gear, then I would have to have it uh, like directed the opposite direction as the other windmill it's hard to explain these things but i hope i'm making myself clear uh but we're not doing that this episode the main thing i wanted to do in this session was to try and get automation um kind of prepped and ready for more advanced things so uh here we go i have put a large gear at the bottom of our main axle and then put an angled gear on that and i wanted to set things up for our kern but as you can see the kern has gravity which is a very strange thing to see in a game like this you never expect to see gravity you know it's, it's just it's very strange i'd much much more normal to see axles rotating in space with no nothing supporting them at all but anyway there's our kern uh sitting atop our new axle that is attached to a main gear why did we do this why did we add a bunch of extra middlemen steps um, to that axle well it's because we want to be able to attach other things to that gear to power them uh, mainly a uh, health hammer uh, because we are very slowly working towards mechanized or automated smithing it's something i have to figure out and it's not something i fully understand yet but once i understand it i'm sure it'll seem very very simple but right now it seems very very complicated but uh, anyway we still need a lot of resin and i, I make a major mistake here uh, not here in the woods, but after I've collected the resin, I found this beautiful forest of pine trees. And in this forest had a ton of resin. 
And I was making sure you might have noticed, but I have, uh, I mark them on my map. Whenever I see a tree that has resin, I make sure to mark it on my map. And that, that way, next time I come to this forest um, looking for resin, I will have guaranteed yield. Um, it's, I don't think there's any like guaranteed way to grow a tree that has resin. I'm pretty sure that um, basically whenever a pine tree grows, one of the logs has a chance to become a resin um, supplier. So it's it's just one of those things you could maybe grow them But uh, I think it's just kind of a chance thing and you're you're better off just you know Making use of the pine trees you find in the wild rather than trying to um, Reproduce the whole thing in your backyard. So You may have noticed I did a little bit of copper mining there We have found a huge copper yield right here and I'm very excited about that because I have been needing quite a bit of copper and uh, maybe maybe I can get some bismuth going together at some point as well uh, and in that way I can continue working on my chain mail or I could scrap that all together still not sure what I want to do about that no but here is my major mistake as I make two toggles I made two toggles um, I made two toggles <laughs> Uh, why did I make two toggles? Well, because I didn't understand what this thing was. I didn't understand that it was part of basically a hammer helve. I thought that this, when I when I heard toggle, I was like, oh, this is the thing that basically connects uh, power from one thing to another and uh, allows me to toggle said power output um, from one thing to another. But no, in fact, at all, that is not correct. That is 100% incorrect. And this thing is used for the helm, the, the, the health hammer. Um, the thing I was thinking about was um, uh, a ooh, transistor, not transistor. Ah, you know what I mean. It's a thing. It's a, called a transistor something. And it's, I need a clutch and a transmission. There we go. I figured it out. A transmission. Um, so I'm going to need to make transitions. And instead I made two toggles. And so I have a second toggle. But the good news is that... Eventually, I will make use of that. Um, I think the ideal helm, uh, health hammer setup is actually three health hammers on one anvil. Um, and I would like to do that. It's pretty legit when you have it set up properly. So I'd like to do that. Um, definitely realizing that my, my setup, my game is a very industrious one. I don't think that a lot of people play this game this industrious, but whatever. Um, so here we go, we're making tons of new barrels, tons and tons, because I wanted to make a new leatherworking setup, and I tried it one way, you saw it there for a split second, and I decided I didn't like it, instead I like this way, uh, and I think that this looks pretty good, and uh, my friend at the time that was watching uh, even decided, uh, they, they let me know, like, you can even line it up so that the signs... Um, continue to correlate to the barrels so uh, I was gonna have basically like three barrels dedicated to borax three barrels dedicated to light tannin and then three to strong tannin and I do have it that way but instead of having each row dedicated to one concept I have each row having the same uh, basically flow of resources and that way those um, you know those signs you can see in the back on the wall correlate correctly and I can refer to them and and everything kind of flows very nicely and we have a uh, tripled our output of processing leather and I even have um, some more uh, pelts kind of working or being cleaned in the borax right now so that's gonna do it if you enjoyed this definitely hit that like button please hit that like button and consider subscribing for more content like this like really it would mean something to me I don't know a lot something something all right oh well i'll see you guys next time take it easy have a good one have a good day